A few weeks ago, I restored the three chord chuck of my new Amco CNC lathe. It was the only chuck which came with the machine, and given the poor condition it was in, both optically and in terms of precision, I decided it is best to bring it back into a factory new lag state. It was a pretty rough way, but in the end I got a good looking and pretty accurate chuck for my lathe. But the truth is, even back in excellent condition, this chuck is not the greatest fun to use, so I was lucky to get a completely new chuck from Proxon, which fits the machine perfectly. I could have been lucky now, but for some tasks it is nice to have a collet chuck too for your machine. Collet chucks are typically more accurate and repeatable than a 3 chord chuck, and due to the even clamping pressure they don't damage the surface, which is important when you have to machine delicate or softer parts. I have at least two collet chucks for my mini lathe, but none of them can be mounted on the new Emco lathe, as it has a pretty unique spindle nose. So I had to build one by myself. Emco actually produced a collet chuck for this lathe, but by the photos I saw it looks extremely weak and flimsy. Later I found out that Proxon even have a nice collet chuck in its catalog, which fits the machine, but it was too late, I already started my try of making my own one. And here we are. To not start completely from scratch, I bought an ISO 40 taper ER20 collet chuck, which I plan to modify to fit my purpose. This thing is originally used on larger milling machines, but from the size it should fit my machine pretty well. The advantage of modifying an existing industrial tooling is, that it has already all the features precisely machined, which are critical for the chuck's accuracy. First and foremost, the taper for the collet and the thread for the clamping nut. Here you get an idea how the collet chuck will look like in the end on my Amco lathe, of course without the taper. The first thing is to get rid of the ISO 40 taper. I was a little bit worried if the tool is hardened, so I tested first with a file, but to my surprise the steel is pretty soft. So it should be no problem to put this thing on the bandsaw. And yeah, it's probably not the best idea to clamp the tool on the tapered part. But with this fixed, the Benzo had absolutely no problems of cutting the taper off. The remaining front part of the collet chuck gets clamped in the forger chuck of my lathe for further machining. I installed the copper soft jaws to protect the surface of the collet chuck from scratches. If you are interested, I made a video on how to build these soft copper jaw protectors. Next I carefully dialed the part in, both in axial and radial direction, before I faced the front side. The steel feels a little bit tougher, but it's still pretty machinable. I used polished carbide inserts for aluminium, which work great in hardened steel too, but of course they don't last as long as when cutting aluminium or brass. For cutting the recess for the spindle nose, I used the bed slide dial and the adjustable carriage stop, which I made in the past. Both are a great help for repeating cuts to the same length. If you are interested, there are videos on both builds on my channel as well. Now I can bore out the recess for the spindle nose without having to worry about going too deep with the internal boring bar. When I came close to the final size, I stopped for an additional run out check. 
For this, I inserted the dial test indicator into the hole in the middle of the chuck so that the measuring needle touches the ground collet taper on the inside. With this, I tried to guarantee the best possible concentricity of the recess for the spindle nose in relation to the collet taper. After a small adjustment of the forecharge chuck, I got the taper to run through by one hundredths of a millimeter. This should be fine. Now I could finish the internal diameter and bring it to final size. Jamfering the inner edge and we are done with this part. For the test fit on the lathe, I remove the part together with the whole forcher chuck. This way I can easily rechuck the part in case I have to widen the internal diameter a little bit more. But it turned out that the internal centering diameter is already a little bit on the loose side, so no need for further machining. At first I was a little bit disappointed for not hitting a closer tolerance, but in hindsight it was a good thing as this made it possible to tap the chuck to perfect run out when mounted. The next thing to do was to drill the bolt hole circle for the mounting screws. As I couldn't find the diameter of the hole circle of the spindle nose anywhere on the internet or in the documentation of the machine, I had to first measure the exact dimensions. I thought it might be the best to use the machine itself for measuring. So I clamped a piece of plastic in the tool turret of the lathe and drilled it with a drill in the lathe chuck. Now I could slide that drill, which is the tap drill size for the M5 thread in the spindle nose, through the plastic part until it is in line with the first bolt hole. I zeroed the machine's measurement system and moved the cross light in X direction to the opposite hole. When the drill and the hole lined up, I could just read the travel distance on the display. This is the bolt hole circle diameter and it is 29 mm. Now I can clamp the chuck with the part still in there onto my small rotary table to drill the holes for the mounting screws. Again, I had to carefully dial the part in to run perfectly true to the axis of the rotary table. Next, I centered the spindle of the milling machine exactly over the middle of the part. Now I can move one axis to the radius of the bolt hole circle, which is 14.5 mm, and drill the three holes. And this is the collet jack with the finished centering collar and the mounting holes. Now I flipped the part and again carefully dialed it in on the rotary table to machine the recesses for the mounting screw heads. I used a 6mm carbide end mill to rough out the seats for the screw heads.
I then change to a 10mm carbide end mill to bring the recesses to final size. Notice that I had to clamp the end mill in the drill chuck as my milling machine only allows direct clamping with collets up to 6mm. This is not good practice, but I had no other choice here. Yeah, and this is what happens when you want too much from your little milling machine. But thankfully nothing was seriously damaged. And now comes the fun part. The recesses I milled are still not deep enough to fully accept the heads of the M5 mounting screws. But I could not make them larger as I otherwise would mill away as well the thread above for the collet nut. So I needed a special tool to finish the screw seats. I sent a 10mm carbide end mill to a friendly colleague who ground away quite a bit and modified the ordinary 10mm end mill into a 10mm T-slot cutter. So thanks again for your help. With this cutter I can dive deeper into the material without damaging the thread above and hopefully making enough space for the screw heads. This task challenged my small milling machine quite a bit. A 10mm end mill with a cut width of 3mm clamped in a drill chuck machining tool steel really is not what this machine is made for. It screamed and rattled like crazy, but again I had no other choice and with a lot of patience and ear protection I finally got it done. A short test fit with an M5 screw confirmed that I'm on the right track. It seemed to work what I have thought out. Just reclamp the part and doing the same on the two remaining holes. Et voila, this is the mainly finished collet chuck with the finished machined mounting holes. The screws fit just perfectly into the holes. Now only these sharp edges bother me. I decided to flatten them a little bit on the milling machine to be a little less dangerous when this thing is spinning on the lathe. And as a last step I milled some nice chamfers on all the edges. And here we are. This thing is looking great so far, I think. Now it only needs a few last finishing touches. The edges of the screw recesses are still pretty sharp. I slightly rounded them with a Proxon IBS grinder. To finally smoothen everything I used a scotch bright wheel on the IBS grinder. And now, as a last step, I renewed the blackening. For this I had to first clean and degrease the part carefully. Then I applied the cold brewing liquid.
After washing away the remainings underwater, it is important to immediately oil the part again to prevent it from rusting. And this is the finished little collet chuck for my Amco Compact 5 CNC lathe. Let's mount it on the machine. Now I'm curious how accurate this thing actually is. Freshly installed, the dial test indicator showed quite some movement. About five hundredths of a millimeter of run out error not that great. But as the chuck has a few hundreds of play on the spindle nose, it is possible to tap it in to run perfectly true. I just loosened the mounting screws a little bit and tapped it slightly with a hammer to bring it to about one hundredths of a millimeter of run out error. This should be pretty okay for the beginning. If you watch carefully, there is something still missing. Right? The collets. Do you remember this name? You should. Ragotsky and Gatje sponsored me a 3 jaw chuck not that long ago, which I modified into a split jaw chuck with aluminium soft jaws. Ragotsky and Gatje are a supplier of all different sorts of machine tools, cutting tools, work holding and clamping accessories. And they thankfully sent me a set of ER20 collets for free. So be sure to check out their shop via the link in the video description below. Thanks again for supporting me and for sending me this set of collets. So let's see what this chuck looks like with a collet installed. Again, quite a little bit of movement, which I had to fix by lightly tapping with a hammer. But then the reading on the indicator looked perfectly. I'm really happy how this thing turned out and I'm pretty sure you will see this little chuck used on the machine in the future. I hope you enjoyed this build, thank you all for watching and till next.